Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and one of the frequent questions that I get asked is, how do you raise queens? How long do you raise queens? Many different things like that. So we're going to show you grafting with the Chinese grafting tool in this video. More and more, as I've started to use them, I have found that, especially I think for new beekeepers, they're a lot handier than the German grafting tool. And I started with the German grafting tool, and so it took me a little while, but I'm starting to warm up and use the Chinese grafting tool now as my go-to grafting tool. They work really nice. I'm going to show you a close-up here in just a second. But here in Tennessee, we can raise queens, start raising about the end of March, and raise them all the way till September. That's pushing the season. You definitely don't want to be making September splits. You can. I just, I find that they're a high percentage loss category. That's one thing to requeen a colony in September if it's strong, but maybe needs a new queen. So there's a lot of variables there. Right now we're in June. There's been thunderstorm after thunderstorm. Thankfully we're getting some clearer weather and we're going to get some good queens to come back, I hope. As you can see, we have this nice grafting stand right here. One of our subscribers, James McNally from Canada, sent this down and he did a really good job finishing this as well as making this. I'm enjoying it very much and it's one of those things where I was like, ah, I want to get one, I want to get one and just kept leaning it up on something, but this way it's consistent every time and I like it very much. You can see down into these cells, we picked a frame that had the nice new wax and black foundation so you can see down into there. And as you can see, I have already pulled away from some of the cells. You can see where all that damage is to the comb for some of the shots that you are going to see in a moment. But this right here is the perfect frame to graft from because you can see really good. Black plastic foundation helps quite a bit. One of the things I want to point out is if you'll notice over in here, you got the eggs, and as you work up towards the larvae, they're floating in pools of royal jelly. Now the older ones, it's actually going to be worker jelly, which is different. It has inhibitors in it that prevent queens from fully developing. So that's why it's important to get the larvae like I'm fixing to show you right now. So look at that larvae right down in there. It's the perfect size to graft. Apologize, I'm holding the camera, looking through the screen, and now attempting to graft with this Chinese grafting tool. We're going to put the tool next to the larvae, and then we're going to push down and curve it up underneath. And really, we don't hardly touch it because there's that jelly right there, and this is a nice size. So, you can see eggs right here and a lot of young, young larvae. That's perfect. You can graft a little bit bigger than this, but I like to get as young as I can. But when you're first starting out, just do it. Just If you get them a little bit big, I think it's still better than a lot of what you can buy. Just don't go too big. Let me see if I can find some in here. There we go. See those right down in there? Those are too big. We don't want to get any of those. But if you want to get some of these that are you know, mid-size, try them out. Your first batch, you can see towards the edge we have some that are just, they probably hatched today. So that's pretty interesting. Let's see if we can get a shot of dropping this into a Jay-Z BZ cup. We're going to drop this larvae down in here. And just push this plunger and just barely and carefully scoot that larvae off. And, wow, that was hard. Now you can see it down in there just like that. Now that we have this bar grafted, it is like 90 degrees, it's dry. We don't want these larvae to dry out. So we really need to make sure that we put a damp towel, make sure it's not gonna drip water onto them. So kind of squeeze it out a little bit, but we are gonna take that and fold it over the one that we just did and pull this other one up and now we can do the same. If you are doing multiple bars, then you just you can keep them underneath these towels until you are ready to go. 
Now we've grafted a few rounds of queens. As you can tell, these aren't the same ones I was using earlier. This is a set that a subscriber from the New England area sent me on down and he made it out of walnut and I'm really impressed. Walnut is one of my favorite woods by the way just because I just love the coloration of it. I've worked with it several times. We cut a tree down but that's beside the point. This is a, a gift and I really appreciate it very much and so we're using it. The best gifts are the ones that you can use, right? And especially if that's beekeeping usefulness. I can get almost 20. I get 19 per bar on these right here. This is its first time being used. I actually threw it in the wax dipper, so this thing will probably outlive me. <laughs> Let's go over and throw this in a colony. So we're here to our starter colony, and we are going to pull one of these frames out and place those cells right on in. There's, it's a good strong colony with no queen. It does have brood, but it's all capped. And these two frames over here were foundation when we started this uh, about two weeks ago. And we are this is the frame that we are going to take out and make room for. Shake that out of there. And you can see where there's just a little bit of left of the pollen patty that we made for them. And that really helps. Even though that there's good pollen coming in, we want to make sure that there's absolutely no sense of stress and nutrition in any form or fashion. So we do give them a little feed with this top feeder um, with this high from Blue Sky Bee Supply. I like the box. I like it. It's got a, if you look down in here, I think maybe you can see it. It's getting a little dark. You can see that screen down there at the bottom. And I love that. It's insulated. It's well vented. I can pack a ton of bees here in summer. I don't feel like they're getting stressed out. So that's why I'm using it as one of my starters. I'm just going to plop that right down into here. me be and make sure to put these frames back over really good and we'll give them a little bit of syrup I need to throw another bit of patty in here but let me tell you we usually pack at least two really good frame, frames of bee bread I'd say there's at least two to three frames worth of bee bread in here and they've done a good job drawing out this foundation that's great yeah we're gonna have to swap one of these out so, or two so when we feed them they won't web up the cells. Sometimes when you're grafting they'll put some webbing in between the queen cells. What's called webbing but it's just comb going in between one or the other and if you have some foundations that they're drawing out that really alleviates that tendency because they're putting it over here. That's great. So I want to turn this one around so they'll draw that out a little bit better. I need to come in and take this one out is what I need to do. We're going to smoke these and next time I come in I'll add a patty. The pollen flow has been good up to this point. And we're just going to leave this in here for 24 hours anyways. Excuse me. So this is our breeder queen down in here. So. That's where those larvae came from. We're over here at one of our finisher colonies. There's a little bit of a flow going on, so we've got this super on top. It's not super full. Oh, you see what I did there? Eh, you know, it might be half full. Yeah. And you can see some pollen patty. And what we have is a single brood management, great queen down in here. Then we have the excluder. And I have three or four frames of bee bread up in here. I have a frame of larvae right here. And it's really important to have a frame of larvae and a frame of bee bread right up against your grafts. Um, oftentimes, if I'm running enough queens, I'll have two of these up in here. I'll put one in, then come back in a few days later on another round and then stick one over in here and it works really good. You just got to make sure there's plenty of bees. Oh, look at those cells right there. It's not a hundred percent take, but honestly, the cells look nice. That's the main thing. And I've got a third one down there at the bottom. 
So, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight out of 45 didn't take, but that's not the end of the world. This is how I go about queen rearing. You know, we, we love to show when we have these, you know, sometimes I'll get like 99%. One time I even had 100% on 45 like that. That's fantastic, but that's not realistic. So don't expect that with yours. I don't expect that with mine. That's pretty normal right there. Sometimes I get a little bit better, sometimes a little worse, but I need about 300 queens right now. So in order to get 300 queens, I'm probably gonna raise about 400 to 500 cells. And some of them don't take. And then you also, when you put them in the mating nukes, not 100% of them come back. And then even when they do come back, there's a small percentage that may not mate well, even though it's the same week as their sisters. So there's a lot of variables, but if you need 10, probably shoot for 15 to 20. If you have extras, goodness gracious, you can sell them. I promise you. I'm not taking orders right now. We just we have too much going on. I really wanted to this year, but uh, we just have so much going on. We just can't handle it. Just can't handle it. We're gonna we're looking into interns and uh, maybe an employee next year. We have the bees to do it, just don't have the manpower and all that kind of stuff. But that's all you have to do for your starter finisher right there. I think this is a pretty classic way of doing it. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. But one thing we must do is every week get down into this bottom box and check and make sure that they're not wanting to swarm down in there. Because it is powerful. And this, this super is chock full of bees. There's tons of bees here and there's more bees on the way. But they, they view this as like, once they're started, these colonies set up like this are terrible at starting. If you were to take graphs and just plop it right in here, it, it wouldn't take. They would ignore those and nothing would happen. But that queenless starter we were just at over there, they're in an emergency mode. They're like, oh my goodness, this is, we have no larvae. Oh, the, now here's some that the beekeeper gave us. They don't realize that, but that's what happened. And they're like, we have desperately got to make a queen or we're going to die out. Of course, we don't let that happen. But they'll start almost all of those cells as long as they're good. And they'll start them. And once they're started, a day later after we drop those, we can bring it over here. And they'll finish them out for us. And that's what we're doing. We basically run multiple starters and every 24 hours, we got two starters over there. Every 24 hours, I can take 30, 45, whatever I want, drop those in there. 24 hours later, they get pulled. A new batch goes in if I want more. And then it goes into this colony here. Now, I'm not going to throw another set of these in here the next day. The next round is going to go into another finisher like this finisher here then a few you know probably three or four days into it then this one will get another one that way you don't have the same age going at the same time those of you who have raised queens when you the first after the first 24 hours they put a decent bit of royal jelly in there but after about day two the Jay-Z BZ cup is extremely full of royal jelly, so most of the work goes in the first few days. So if we drop another one into this one, let's say we dropped this one in yesterday, then I wouldn't want to put another one in here for about three or four days, put it over here, and they'll be able to devote a lot of energy to that. You can raise a lot of queens with this system. There's other ways to do it. This is just how I do it. And of course, on day 10, goodness gracious, you got to get them out. Now let's show you where they go from here. A thunderstorm's moved up on us. So I'm going to have to hurry up. And I can't explain as much as I'd like to, but this is another method. Just a very strong queenless starter finisher. It's got a lot of bees, a lot of nutrition, right age. Look at all these beautiful cells right here. It's just a strong starter finisher. And still some gorgeous cells. Very nice take here. It's starting to rain hard. We'll see you in a minute. So here we are at the first stage of incubation. When we put them in the finisher after the first day in the starter colony, we pull them on day seven. So there's one day into the starter, 
then it's going to be six days in the cell finisher. And then they are going to come here. And you can see those cells down here. I believe we have 66 cells right now. And this is the first step. And they can stay here, but it's nice to be able to just pull them out, especially because like today, it's just a thunderstorm coming in again. And just drop them right in here with the frames and all. But when we have a chance or we have a lot of queens going at once, it's nice to have a backup incubator and then we'll show you what we do on the next stage. And here we are in my office on the last stage dealing with the cells and we have them in this secondary incubator. I really like having both because the other one again will accommodate the frames. This one right here though, we can clear the cells off of those frames and then stick more frames in and then have them in this incubator and have all the cells down in these JZBZ cups with the cell protectors. All of this is made by JZBZ and you just, if I can grab one with my fingers and you just you can see the cell down in there and it's well protected and on day 10 we take them out of here and to the mating nukes you can see we have a sponge and you can store a bunch of queen cells in this portable incubator right here so i have the set temperature at 93 degrees of course opening it really changed the information quite a bit but it stays very close to 93 degrees you can watch it it'll go um, 93.2 maybe, no, it might drop down to just just a couple tenths of a degree in either direction of what you said it. It has that fan, I don't know if you can hear the whirring, but it's got that fan going all the time. This is really important for queen cells and probably any incubating, is that you don't end up with hot spots. Heat wants to rise, obviously cool air wants to settle. This fan just keeps that all mixed around in there so you get a nice even temperature. I don't really get really particular on humidity when this thing is hasn't been open for a while it should read in the 60s on humidity sometimes when I put a little bit in there it'll rise up to low 70s um, I try to keep it in the 60s at least on the humidity but it, right now it's, it's saying different but 93 degrees works really well for me the incubator itself comes from Cutler Bee Supply up north. But I will leave a link below if you want to see where they're at. This was recommended to me by Bob Benny and that's the nice thing about YouTube is that if we can collaborate between what we know actually works good and let our beekeeping buddies know about it, now we can take a lot of headache out of it. And I'm really pleased I saw that information from Bob because I was looking at different models and this one is exactly what I needed. And I felt assured when I purchased it that this was going to suit my needs, and it absolutely does. It, I've been, this is my first year using it. I've been very pleased with it. It's very simple, easy to adjust, and does a good job and doesn't break the bank. And goodness gracious, you can hold a lot of queen cells in there too. So this is just the last stage of incubation. And now we just have to throw them in mating nukes and have some queens come back. So I hope this video has maybe helped show you a little bit more on how we raise queens. It's not extremely extravagant. It works good for our few hundred colony operation, but I think you can translate it down into a smaller scale, or if you're bigger than us or wanting to raise more queens, you can take this and adjust it to however you want to do it, and I think do pretty well. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave it below.